Shila Prabhupad Kijai Eskan founder Acharya Shila Prabhupad Kijai Ananda Goti voice now for Nagni Kijai Namacharya Shila Harila Stakud Kijai Prem Say Kahoshi Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nichananda Shitwe Nagadata Shiva Sari Gaur Vakta Vrinda Kijai Shishi Radha Krishna Gopika Prasayam Kun Radha Kunda 
Giri Govardhan ki jai, Vrindavanam ki jai, Machuram ki jai, Jagadatha Sami ki jai, Yamunamai ki jai, Shimati Lassi Devi ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrindi ki jai, Gaur Premananda Hari 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 all glories he assembled the devotees. All glories he assembled the devotees. All glories he assembled the devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Gauranga Shri Bhagavad Gijai Go Premananda Hari Hari Go. So before reading, I just want to mention today is the day that Iskon was incorporated many many years ago, 1966. So it's an important day. So we'll read the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Fourth Canto, Chapter 20, Text 32. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vaiha. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vaiha. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vaiha. Okay, so I'll just read the Sanskrit since you don't have it written out. Maitri Vacha Ityani Rajendra Yaja Rajendra Nudasa Vishwadrik Tamaha Rajan Mai Bhakti Rastute Drishtye Drishti Nadir Mai Te Kritaya Mayam Madhyam Tarati Smadushyajam Okay. Can repeat Maitreya Maitreya the great sage Uvacha spoke Iti thus Adi Rajendra by the original king Prithu hmm. Nutaha being worshipped Zaha he, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vishwadrik, the seer of the whole universe. Tam, unto him. Aha, said. Rajan, my dear king. Mahi, unto me. Bhaktihi, devotional service. Astu, let it be. Te, your. This job, by good fortune. Idrishi, like this. Dihi, intelligence. Mahi, unto me. Te, by you. Krita, having been performed. Yaya, by which. Mayam, Mayam, illusory energy. energy. Madiyam, my. Tadate, crosses over. Smath, certainly. Dusjajam, very difficult to give up. So translation. The great sage Maitreya continued by saying that the Lord, the seer of the universe, mm, uh, after hearing, by saying the Lord this year, after hearing Prithu Maharaj's prayer, address the king. My dear king, may you always be blessed by engaging in my devotional service. Only by such purity of purpose as you yourself very intelligently express can one cross over the insurmountable illusory energy of Maya. Okay. So, purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Chai. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, wherein the Lord also claims that the illusory energy is insurmountable. No one can transcend the illusory energy of Maya by fruit of activity, speculative philosophy, or mystic yoga. The only means for transcending illusory energy is devotional service, as the Lord Himself states, Mam eva ye prapajante, mayam e tam tarantite. Bhagavad Gita 7, 
14. If one wants to cross over the ocean of material existence, there is no alternative than to take to devotional service. A devotee, therefore, should not care for any material position, whether in heaven or in hell. A pure devotee should always engage in the service of the Lord, for that is his real occupation. Simply by sticking to that position, one can overcome the stringent laws of material nature. So, Maitreya Vacha, Ichyani, Ichyani Ranjan Ranutasa Vishwadrik, Tamaha Rajan Mai Bhakti Rastute, Jishedrashi Dir Mai Take Ritaya Yak, Mayam Madhi Yam Daratis Madhusya Jam. So, Omagana Tibananda Shah, Gananjana Shlakaya, Chakshur Unmilitam, Yena. Tazmai, Shi Gurvein Maha. So this description given by Srila Prabhupada uh, in the uh, Srimal, in the purport, reminds me of the description uh, given about uh, Chitraketu uh, by Lord Shiva. You know, it's a very similar type of description. Of course, Chitraketu, just for those who don't know, uh, he was on Sankirtan and he ran into a little sort of trouble. He criticized, or he made a comment about Lord Shiva having Durga on his lap as he was talking to the sages. And Durga cursed him to become a demon. And instead of counteracting the curse, that means stopping the curse, because he was powerful, he's a Vaishnava, instead of arguing with Durga, instead of going to court and getting a lawyer, against Durga, which doesn't work very well. What he did was he bowed down at her feet and touched her feet and he accepted and said, oh, that's fine. And so the description given in the Bhagavatam as Narayana Paraksarve Nakutashtina Vivyati Swarga Abhavarga Narakeshu Apitulyarta Darshana. Important verse, actually. Narayana Parayana. That means the topmost devotee of the Lord. And here it's in the case of Narayan. Of course, Krishna has multifarious incarnations. Paraksarve. Nakutashna viviti swarga. He doesn't care. He sees it the same. I'm sorry. Uh, what is it? Swarga. He sees, uh, he sees the heavenly planets, or he says, apavarga. He sees liberation, pavar, pavarga, apavarga. Actually, the word pavarga is very interesting. It means the miseries of this material world. Srila Prabhupada uh, several times explained the word parvarga as pa, ma, ma, parishama. That means uh, hard work, foaming at the mouth, fainting, and ultimately death. That's the material world. Pa, varga. And of course, we're engaged in a path, hopefully, of upa varga vartmani, uh, as described. By Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, up of Argavartmani, Shradarati, Urvakti, and Ukramishati. No, that's actually Lord Kapilade who described that. Up of Argavartmani, Satam Prasangam, Mamaviri, Sambado, and Pavanti, Vritkarna, Rasayana Kata, Tajoshana Dasu, up of Argavartmani, Shradarati, Urvakti, and Ukramishati. Anyway, so uh, this Pavarga, up of Arga, Pavarga, Apitulyarta Darshana. That a devotee sees all these things as exactly the same. Heaven, hell, liberation, going back to God, exactly the same. Now that's interesting. Why does he see all these things as the same? Because wherever he goes, he does the same thing. Prabhupada gave the example uh, when he was commenting on this verse of a wheat threshing machine. A wheat threshing machine is meant to thresh wheat. You know, for those of you who don't know what that means, that means a machine that uh, cuts down the wheat and combines it in certain ways so you can have rotis <laughs> as a wheat threshing machine. And so Prophet said, if you take a wheat threshing machine and you send it anywhere, it will always have the same purpose, right? So a devotee, no matter where he goes, he has the same purpose, and that purpose is service. Uh, just like sometimes... We get threatened by people who are Christians. And they say, 
you're going to hell. You ever have that happen to you? You're out preaching in the street, distributing books or hats or whatever you're doing. And the Christian says, you're going to hell because you haven't surrendered to his particular brand of Christianity. <laughs> you know, there's so many different brands of Christianity. Just like there's different mobile phone people, you know, who uh, make mobile phones. There's Samsung, there's Google, there's Apple. And so there's different brands of Christianity. Because you haven't, so that's called tribal religion, in case you haven't figured that out. Tribal religion means I'm the best, everybody else is going to hell. So the Christians sometimes come up to us and they say, you are going to hell, you're the devil. And my response is, yeah, if I go to hell, that's fine. Because if I go to hell, there'll be great preaching there. <laughs> Fantastic preaching, as everybody's being tortured by the Yamadutas, you just say, chant Hare Krishna, and you get free of the torture. Okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Actually, heaven is not such a great place to preach because people are enamored by the opulence there. You know, the mangoes as big as the city of New Orleans, basically. <laughs> Rivers of mango juice. Beautiful people who never smell bad like they do on this earth planet. <laughs> you know, no crying babies. Did you know that? In heavenly plants, no crying babies. They actually, when people are, appear, they appear full grown. So none of this stuff goes on. Anyway, sorry if I'm offending someone who has babies. So, but they certainly cry all night. So uh, in heavenly bonds, it's very difficult to convince people, but still there's preaching going on there. And there's preaching going on the hellish planets and on the earth planet there's preaching. And uh, basically, so we would do the same thing. If we're devotees, we do the same thing anywhere. So therefore, a devotee is Kita Jan Mahoy Yata Tuya Das, you know, as Bhakti Vinod Thakur states, right? I don't mind taking birth as a worm, as long as the worm is your devotee. You've got to get the worm some Japa beads to chant. <laughs> you know, anyway, I guess there's worms that are devotees. They chant Hare Krishna. So I don't mind uh, as long as I can be associated with your devotees. Because actually, the most miserable thing for a devotee is what? When the discussion between Ramananda Roy and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Roy, what's the most miserable thing that there is? And he said, being separated from the devotees. It's interesting. Not taking birth as a worm, not taking birth as a cockroach, not taking birth as an animal, not taking birth in hell, but the most miserable thing is being separated from the devotees. So as long as we're not separated from devotees, we have an association of devotees, uh, then that's fine. And of course, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said the first quality of a devotee is a satsanga chagi vaishnava vachara. That the first quality of a devotee, he gives up bad association and takes satsanga, you know, association with pure devotees. So, uh, so anyway, so this is the quality of uh, Great devotees, pure devotees of the Lord, like Chitraketu, who we were just talking about. And Chitraketu did take birth uh, as a demon, but he took birth as a Krishna conscious demon. <laughs> and that's the story of Vritrasura. And this demon who he took birth as was able to preach to Indra, and even though Indra was a demigod, Indra was acting demoniacally. <laughs> and Indra didn't actually kill him, and Indra thought he would kill them, and Indra had to suffer the re karmic reactions for killing a great devotee, the Supreme Personality of God. So that's the story of Chitraketu. So, uh, also we find in the uh, Shikshashika the prerequisite for being a pure devotee of the Supreme Personality of God, the last verse of the Shikshashika, where Lord Chaitanya prays in the mood of Srimati Radharani, uh, because he is Krishna in the mood of Radha. Uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Mahayanya. He prays that Krishna, you may crush me by your embrace. You may leave me broken hearted by not being present before me. You're completely free to do anything and everything. And I will always serve you. You remain my worshipful Lord unconditionally. 
And in the last chapter of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami elaborates or explains more deeply what that means in terms of the mood of Srimati Radharani serving Krishna. Uh, and in that description, uh, Radharani states, and it's actually Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Radharani, Radharani states that uh, even if Krishna wants to associate with some other woman, uh, he or she will go to that other woman to facilitate that association. You know, that's love. And of course, I'm not suggesting that in the material world, that if a husband wants to associate with another woman, that the wife should go and serve. That's not appropriate. That's adharmic. But what's adharmic in this world, in its original form, is the highest dharma. That's why we have in the 15th chapter of the Gita, the description of the upside-down banyan tree, which has its roots going up and its branches going down. Because this material world is a perverted reflection. So the things that are most degraded in this world, which is illicit sex, is the most elevated thing within the spiritual. It's not illicit anymore, but it's parakia. Parakia means outside of the marriage relationship. So Radharani is showing us this topmost aspect of devotional service. In other words, I will serve you, Krishna, regardless of what you do, whatever you, whether you're present before me or not present before me. And that's also illustrated in a very nice verse from the Bhagavatam that Tate Nukampam Sushamikshmana Bunjanivatma Kritam Vipakam. Ridvad Bapur Vir. Vridam Namaste. Jiveta Yo Mukti Pade. Sadayavak. What does that verse say? It's that, uh, that a devotee will go on suffering in this material world, if Krishna wants. Uh, the resultant, he'll consider the suffering to be the resultant reactions of his past sinful activities. Tate Nukampam Sushamikshvara. Punjanivat Makratam Vipakam. But then, at the same time, Ridvag Vapurvir, Vridan Namaste. He will, he will go on serving with his heart, his body, and his words. That's like Tri Dandi Sanyasi, you understand? People ask, what, is it, what are the Tri Dandi for? It's body, mind, and words. Mind, in this case, means heart, too, not just your material mind. Body, mind, and words. Ridvag Vapurvir. Vapur means, of course, body. Rid means heart. Vag means words. But uh, I'm not mistaken. So, in other words, that's the test of a devotee. The test of a devotee to see if he actually wants pure devotional service is that no matter what else happens, he'll go on serving Krishna enthusiastically. Not only externally, but lovingly, as Rupa Goswami says, He'll go on doing what Krishna wants enthusiastically and lovingly. That's the point. And that's a hard one. You know, sometimes we do what Krishna wants, but we do it grudgingly, right? Grudgingly means, you know, I'll do it because I'm supposed to do it. I have to do it. I'm forced to do it because my guru told me to do it, because my GVC told me to do it. Yeah. So that's not devotional service, according to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami means I'll continue doing it, and I just want to do this to please Krishna. And if Krishna is happy with me, that's my success. If Krishna is happy, as Radharani says also from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, if it makes Krishna happy to see me miserable, then that's my happiness. <laughs> that's the last chapter of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. You can read it. It's very interesting. It's a chapter about the Shikshashtika. And that's pure devotional service. And that's the price for getting out of the material world. Not to try to simply enjoy Krishna. Just like Prabhupada 
uh, several times said, we shouldn't try to enjoy Krishna or enjoy the spiritual master. We should try to serve them. And then one example of my own life was one time I was with another sannyasi and we were with Prabhupada and we were following Prabhupada around everywhere, you know, like groupies, you know, like rock and roll stuff, you know, whatever. We were everywhere Prabhupada went. We followed him in the United States and Prabhupada took one look and he said, don't you understand? You're not supposed to enjoy the spiritual master. You're supposed to serve the spiritual master. You know, because you're following Prabhupada around. Oh, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. You know, like some, you know, uh, uh, followers of a Bollywood star. And just like a, one time I was with a Bollywood, well, several times I've been with Bollywood stars. Uh, I was with Vivek Oberoi one time. And everyone was following me around. All the paparazzi, you know paparazzi? Yeah. You know what that is? Cameras? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and of course he was, Pretty vain. I mean, he was taking his mustache and twirling it. <laughs> so the pure devotee doesn't have that vanity. He's nidanam nidanam sundari. You know, he's not interested in followers. He just wants to engage people in Krishna's service. So Prabhupada taught us that lesson. You just have to want to please Krishna. That should be the very goal of your life. And if you're like that, then the dami buddhi yogam tam yanamam vyanti te. Bajatam priti purvaka. Right. Priti means love. It doesn't mean simply serving Krishna. Not simply karma yoga, but bhakti yoga. So, anyway, so how do we get to that step? We follow the process of bhakti yoga. We're not at that platform right now. It's artificial that we're at the platform right now. But we follow the platform of. Uh, Sadhana Bhakti right now. Most of us are on plat- Sadhana Bhakti platform, right? Most of us are on the Vaidhi part of Sadhana Bhakti rather than Raganuga. And later on you come to, Vai- to Bhava Bhakti and later on you come to Prema Bhakti. So just be patient. Uh, is it? Utsahan Nishya Darya Tatat Karma Prabhartana. That's Rupa Goswami says that. He says... You should be in utsaha. You should be enthusiastic. Same thing. Uh, determined. Nishya darya. Patient. You understand? And then tatat karma. Following the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness. And then you'll achieve perfection. It's guaranteed by His Divine Grace through the Prabhupada. So, anyway, so any questions or comments about these points that we just made? Questions, comments, arguments, problems? Disturbances. Yes. Maharaj, uh, uh, sadhana bhakti. How can we say that we reach certain state? We are still sadhana. It's like continuous process. What? Okay. The, well, there's two varieties. There's two varieties of sadhana bhakti. <coughs> one is called <coughs> vaidhi, and the other one is called raganuga. So, how do you know when you reach the raganuga stage? Well. The price of Raganuga is intense hankering, lolium. Not lolium for Jai Shishi Radhakanta Shishi Gornatai Jagannath Paladev Subhadra Ki Jai. Hmm. So there's different symptoms. Okay, so let's let's say. So the symptom that you're ready for Raghunuga Bhakti is that you, you're hankering so intensely it's absorbing you 24 hours a day to realize your spiritual identity. Not just like five minutes a day, but all day long you're just saying, Krishna, uh, that's lolium, hankering. Just like we're hankering for material things, which is a detriment to devotional service. So we're hankering for spiritual events, we're hankering for understanding who we are. And then in Raghunuga Bhakti, you, you still follow Vaidhi. You still follow the rules and regulations. <coughs> but you're doing it spontaneously and also you have your internal Bhakti that's going on. Uh, so, Adho Sraddha Tata Sadhu Sango Ta Bhajanat Priya. Narta Navritti, you become free from the Anartas gradually. And then uh, after that, you become Nishta. Nishta means. 
stable, steady, 24 hours a day. It doesn't mean you simply have good sadhana. That means after you leave the temple room, you're also Krishna conscious. I mean, there's a lot of devotees with good sadhana, but then as soon as they leave the temple room, they start all nonsense. They go to the movies. Anyway, you know, whatever, whatever they do. So, uh, so that's nishta, and then one gets ruchi, one gets a taste for devotional service. Um, the taste means that you have a taste for chanting even if the person leading the chanting can't sing properly. That's why Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Thakur would sometimes assign the worst chanter to chant the kirtan. It's interesting. You know, here we have so many nice chanters in New Orleans, I mean so many expert chanters, but imagine if we assigned the worst singer to chant the kirtan. It would drive everyone crazy, wouldn't it? I mean, sometimes I'm leading kirtan and I hear everybody responding and nobody's keeping the same tune. And it drives me crazy. So, <laughs> but to be on the platform of ruchi means that even if someone can't keep a tune, you're appreciating the devotion. You're not attached to the externalities. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Generally, we're attached to the externalities. Someone plays the harmonium nicely, someone plays the mridanga nicely, and it's really beautiful. But if someone is chanting the kirtan, hi, Krishna, <laughs> then get him out of here, you know. <laughs> Take the mridanga away from him. So, ruchi means you appreciate it regardless of how expert someone is. This is described by... Uh, Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur in the Madhurya Kandamadi. I'm actually, you know, giving some quotations from the Madhurya Kandamadi. And then, so anyway, so then, uh, then after that, you have a Shakti, you know, you're completely attached to Krishna. Uh, and then uh, Bhava. You know, Bhava means, anyway, there's so many. I'm actually putting together a presentation about Bhava. Now, the, sim the symptoms that one has Bhava are that one never wastes any time, you know, it's one of the symptoms, always enthusiastic, that's a bhava symptom. And then of course you experience the different bhavas, and then after that you get prema. So you, you can see through the description, if you read the Madhurya Kadambani or study the Madhurya Kadambani, you can just see through the different descriptions, also the Bhajan Rahasha too, by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhajan Rahasha. Uh, both of those literatures can help you understand what stage you're at and what your car is at this particular point. So if you're interested, you know, read those literatures. So any other questions? No, we're not, that's Russes. We're, <laughs> we're talking. Right now we worship, we worry about Dasha, you know, service. In the or no? no, we're not. That's Rasa. That's Rasa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're talking about uh, right now. We have to serve. Just concentrate on being a servant. Yes, yeah, sorry. Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said, uh, serve and uh, let's say desire. Was that quote again? Uh, anyway, serve now and desire. You know, desire later. Anyway, so I forget the exact quote, but we serve. And ultimately, things will happen. That's what we should concentrate on, service. That's dasha, of course, but it's not the dasha ras. Don't worry about going up through the rasas. So you have to go through Kampura, the Lord, Muhammad, so you have to be on the Yeah, you have, first you have to have, yeah, yeah, Kama, Krota, Lova, Mara, Matsarya, Boya, you got to deal with all of them. All of this we, we are practicing, all of this kind of way. Yeah. You know, we're practicing Vajra Vega, Manasa Kroda Vega. Even though we have this Kam, Kroda, Mada, Matsarya, Bhari, Abhaya, lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, we tolerate it. Like, for example, if you start to get angry at another devotee, you tolerate it, you don't do it. That's the stage, the stage most of us are at is Vajra Vega, Manasa Kroda Vega, Jiva Vega, Rudra, Pashta Vega. Tolerating the pushings, the Vegas. And as far as the rasa, you'll realize what your rasa is. You don't have to go from 
Shanta, the Dasha, the Vatsalya, uh, the Sakya, the Vatsalya, the Maturi, you know, you were, it'll be revealed. Uh, it'll be revealed automatically. Actually, yeah, it was work now, samadhi later. That was what probably, that was the quote I was looking for. Work now, samadhi later. So we serve Prabhupada's mission and things are revealed. But don't worry right now what rust you're on. What rust you have in the spiritual world of Rati. Some, some of the Shampada is there, you know, um, they are quoted from Vaitana Sarita in the Samasto Jagod Kari Mare Vidhi Bhakti. Vidhi Bhakti Nahi Pare Bojo Bhavna. Yeah. You know, Simply by Vaiti Bhakti, you're not going to get the higher rust. I know, I know that quote. <laughs> No, no, we use vidi, vaiti. Vidi means rules, vaiti means the process. We, uh, we perform vaiti to get to the Raghunuga platform. But when you're on the Raghunuga platform, you do vaiti also. Because yadyata charity shrestas tatat evet duro janaha. To set an example for others. Let's say we had a devotee on, by, uh, let's say Amrita Karan was on the Raghunuga platform right now. If he started, I'm Raghunuga, you know, I realize I'm a gopi here, you know, wow. I'm cool, don't have to get up for Mangalarti anymore, just absorbed. Then it would create a disturbance in society. And if I did it, it would be more of a disturbance. <laughs> So therefore, even if I or Amritagaran or yourself was on a higher platform, we act like we're not. And that's also one of the qualities of an advanced devotee, is humility. Lord Chaitanya said, I don't have any love for Krishna. He said, if I love Krishna, I could not live because there'd be so much intense separation. So a pure devotee thinks, he has no, not a speck of love for Krishna. That's a symptom of a pure devotee. A neophyte thinks, I love Krishna. I'm an advanced devotee of Krishna. I'm on the Raghunuga spontaneous platform. So, yes, one on the Raghunuga platform. I mean, Vaidhi is meant to bring you to the Raghunuga platform, but Vaidhi is essential. Because unless you deal with Kamaesha, Proteesha, Rajaguna, you know, lust, anger, greed, and all those other nice things, you'll never get to the Raghunuga platform. One has to, uh, one has to have this volume for, for pure devotional service before you can, that's the price for Raghunuga. But yes, I know the statement that you meant that one simply sticks to Raghunuga, I mean to Vaidhi, I'm sorry, then one will be situated in the lower rasas. That's true. If one simply sticks to it, but you still have to do that, and you have your internal cultivation too when you come to the right platform. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. I want to talk about honor, skills, and power. Those who are in the power state, they have also honor, skills. Those on the Bhava stage are free from an artist, but they're not absolutely free according to Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. I'll, I'll explain what I mean. They don't, they've dealt with their anartas, but unless they're careful, they'll come back. Like Bart Maharaj. Bart Maharaj was on the Bhava stage. He was free from an artist, but not absolutely free. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur makes that distinction. He says one can be free, but not absolutely free. Absolutely free means it may come back if you're not attentive. There's a difference. And uh, Bart Morris is a typical example of that. He was on the stage of Baba, and he wasn't attentive. He associated with the deer, and he did not associate with other Vaishnavas. Two problems. You understand? Two problems. He was by himself. As Prabhupada said, one stick by, him, by itself can be broken. Many sticks together cannot be broken. So one on Baba is free of an artist, but he's not absolutely free. So 
So if you're not attentive, of course you're not. Are you in Baba? Are you on the platform, Baba? No way. No way. Okay. We are. We are. We're we're on the platform. We're all on the platform of Baba Rogue. Baba Rogue. Yeah. <laughs> You know what Baba Rogue is? Yes, yeah. Diseased emotions. Baba Rogue. <laughs> yeah, Baba Rogue. <laughs> Baba Rogue. So every one of us is on the platform of Baba Rogue, which means diseased emotions. You know, we want, we want, you know, lust. That's Baba Rogue. Lust, anger, greed, illusion. So, yeah, so one has to be very attentive. You know, a little bit of inattention. Like Prabhupada also said that it's like Krishna consciousness is like shaving with a razor, you know, one of these straight razors that they used to use. In, you know what a straight razor is? That means it's just a big blade, like about this big. Cool. You call it a cool? Yeah, they a cool before they used to. Yeah. In America, too. When I was young, you'd go to the barber shop. When he was giving me my secret. No. <laughs> you go to the barber shop and they had this big razor and they would, uh, they have a leather thing that they yeah, would, yeah, uh, the keep it sharp. they would keep it sharp. They go, they go like, ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> yeah, and Prabhupada said, uh, a little inattention and you cut, you could cut your ear off. Like that. And they used to, you know, they used to do the sideburns. Anyway, I remember when I was a kid. That was, long time ago. So Prabhupada said, little inattention is like shaving with a razor you can get cut. So it's very, so one has to be very attentive. Like Ajamil, he wasn't attentive. He already, he was a devotee, he wasn't on the platform Baba, but he wasn't attentive and then he got enamored. Bharat Maharaj got enamored by a little deer, a cute little deer. So one has to be very careful, even if you're on the platform Baba. And Prema, no. Prema, you're absolutely no, absolutely free of an artist. Baba, no, you know, you have some tendency. Is that, is, Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur is very clear about that. There's a whole analysis he gives in the Madhuri Kanamadi and, and also Bhajan Rahasya by Bhaktivinoda Thakur about when one becomes free from what an artist. He also states that anarthas come from various sources. Anarthas come from sinful activities. Anarthas come from pious activities, because you get attached. Anarthas come from offenses. He gives four different places that anarthas come from. And the fourth one is anarthas come from devotional service. Now, he's, the reason for that is, as you perform devotional service, you get respected. And that can cause an anartha, like someone praises me, is, like someone says, oh, you're so great, you're so wonderful, you're so blissful, and then you think, yes, I'm great, I'm wonderful, and I'm blissful. And that's a cause of anarthas too. That's Vishwanath Chakravati thought. If you're interested in the topic, study the Maturya Kadambani. It's really, you know, you know, I've, given, <coughs> I've given seminars that have taken days and days on Maturya Kadambani. And it's very specific about understanding what one's platform is on devotional, in devotional service. So, any other questions? Yes. A few days you've given a nice lecture and always uh, mentioning that association. So, what is the significance of the association and how we can justify it? Uh, we should have to do associate. Who we associate with? Or how we associate is the question. Yeah, both ways. Uh, how we associate, who we associate, we should associate, uh, we should give association to devotees who are less advanced. We should make friendship with those, I mean, this is Rupa Goswami, friendship with those who are equally advanced and initiated, and those who are uh, more advanced, we should serve. That's Rupa Goswami discusses that. Uh, and there's symptoms to see how advanced someone is. I mean, they, the main symptom that I take to determine how advanced one is, is how steady one is in devotional service. You can't tell internally what's happening in someone's heart and how much dedicated one is to his spiritual master's mission. 
You know, that's really the point. Samitpani shotriyam brahmanishtam. You know, that's how you can really tell. How much one is a servant. You can't tell just by how much someone is saying radhe, radhe all day long. You understand? Someone can say radhe, 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 ramme, shamme radhe. You know, you know, like they do in Brindavan. No. <laughs> yeah. Radhe, radhe, shamme, radhe, 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 shamme, radhe. And they do it back and forth. Like you see that? <laughs> so, uh, or you can't really tell how many times someone says guranga, 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 guranga. But you can tell by how one is dedicated to the spiritual master's mission. Like, how can, you, how can you tell that Srila Prabhupada was the greatest disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur? Dedicated. Dedicated. Because he was the one who took the order of his spiritual master most seriously, right? Yes. That's how you can tell. It's an objective standard. The Prabhupada got the order to go to the West just like many other disciples of Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur got that same order if, if they could preach English. And he was the one who did it at 70 years of age. He had faith in the order of his spiritual master. Yasha Devi Para Bhakti Yata Devi Tathakuru Tashaite Kaditari Arte Prakashante Mahatmana. This is an objective standard. One who has implicit faith in the spiritual master in the Vedic literatures, everything's revealed to him. So Prabhupada showed he had 100% faith. Didn't he? I mean, that's how much it takes to go to a foreign country with no money and bad health on a boat. I mean, how many of you, for me even, would go... <laughs> if, if, if Prabhupada, you know, if your spiritual master said, all right, you have to go on a boat to, let's figure out some place, to, uh, uh, Africa's pretty easy, uh, to Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> and do Harinam in Pakistan, in the middle of, uh, in the middle of the street. <laughs> Anywhere. Anywhere, it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> or you have to go, if, I, if you're spiritual master, you have, you have to go to the Taliban, you know, and, uh, in Syria. Afghanistan. What? Syria. 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 <laughs> or you have to go to the, yeah, Syria to the ISIS, you know, ISIS. And do a hari now. <laughs> and you go, but you can't go by boat to Syria. But anyway, so. <laughs> so, so many Prabhupada disciples did, the kid that is in Kerala. Yeah, so many Prabhupada disciples. So that shows one's faith. Like, like you have Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, who went to uh, Russia and everything when it was communist Russia, the KGB was chasing after him to distribute Prabhupada's books. So that's, this, that's really the test. And Prabhupada showed he's the best devotee just from that test. I mean, you, you know, you, you can speculate about other things, you know, if someone a gopi, if someone a coward boy, that's all speculation in our minds. But there's really external objective symptoms. And that's, Prabhupada showed those symptoms of his exalted position. So I think we have to end now because it's time for prasadam and we're not, we're not aloof or transcendental to eating. So all glorious, divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada.